ago I gave you a quick demonstration on how I thought you needed to make some knobs. Um, one of the government wisdom says, you know, that makes a whole savvy class. Uh, I'm not a turner, I'm a picture person. And uh, so uh, we enlisted Dan, who is a really good turner, to, to augment my presentation. So very quickly, I looked at what I discussed the other day, and it's how to make a um, picture, and then uh, here's some knobs. And my knobs are basically five, five mm -hmm. soft knobs made with a um, picture and you can see here on the band saw basically four steps to make it work real hard in it. Make a pattern. Uh, you got five five finger holes in your pattern. So that's 360 divided by five, which is 72 degrees each. And I drew that out with a compass. Take this. Uh, Attach the pattern to the, the block with double face tape. In this case, I use pin nails because double face tape has a tendency to slip. Put it on your grip. There you go. Now, I've got this set up so the drill press is hitting the same spot on the fixture each time. I'm not going through the table. So, basically, you just line the drill press up with the hose. the next hole to drill go all the way around them. So so this is my uh, fixture. I've got set up so I can drill a hose. I've also got set up so I can use my bandsaw. Basically we now have a pattern like this with five hose in it. Take off the pattern. Slide this on your bandsaw. And I'm not sure this bandsaw is actually going to do what I want to do because we've got a much wider blade here than I, I'm used to. I usually use an 8 inch blade. So you simply turn on the bandsaw and we'll do that today. And since it's on a pivot point, it cuts in a nice zero point. I can try this. This is what happens. Oh, I've got a nice zero point. Stop, stop, just stop in this can, which is the center of my uh, knob, parallel to the, the blade, right? Take it out. You now have a nice basic knob. From there, I move over to the um, to the lathe, and I could have easily I could have easily had drilled the hole for this on the uh, regular drill press, but uh, at the time I was in the mood to use a lathe, so I took a piece of leather, wrap around the leather. So this board was originally flat on both sides, which is important. So when you're doing this step, that you uh, actually have a flat surface to be bored against. <coughs> the leather was to keep from messing up the, the knob. Turn on the lathe, drill a hoe into the knob. You've got a quarter inch hoe here already because that's a pivot point and the screw I'm using on this is quarter inch so we're drilling this hole approximately two-thirds of the way into the knob so my insert disappears and you don't see it from the top so after you do that you got a hole here I made a small um, adapter just out double blocked nut and bolt Put the insert on it, and once the insert's on it, I'm just turning one and the other, cranking down here and forcing that in. And what you end up with, so you've got the insert in it, you know, the camera. So you've got a hole here, so the screw goes through it, you don't see the insert, and that's pretty much it. Larry, 
Can you use the drill press to put the... Uh, yes, there are many ways you can do this. Okay. No, you can you use the drill press to put this? Probably what we have with the drill press is you've got to hold three pieces in your hand and this way, at least I'm letting the lathe clamp the, this knob. Now, the other solution to that is I went through uh, Woodsmith. Yes. Yeah, Woodsmith. And I found this article four years back. <laughs> <laughs> so basically this is the, a jig spring loaded with the insert on the jig you drill a hole on the, you drill this hole on the drill press I made a clamp so I'm showing my first made a clamp put this in here put that over at the spring put just enough tension on the um, the knob to uh, seat it, hit it with a uh, ratchet, and it seats it in here perfectly straight. Now you're supposed to have a brass washer on here, and I thought, what do you need a brass washer for? What it does, it makes it easier to separate the insert from the, the pin. Otherwise, they're married, and you can't, when you back it out, your, your insert comes out too. So you can also drop a, some CA glue on the outside of that to hold it there. So that's one way you can put it in. And these were easy to make with just basically when it springs, it got some nylon inserts. It's in the it's in the magazine. Can you pass those around when you're ready? Sure, I'll pass it. Um, put pins in here so the alignment's right. Now, the next step would be to put a slot in here and put wooden knobs on it, but I haven't made enough of it for that yet. Any questions on <coughs> Any questions? That's pretty, pretty simple stuff. So um, after we went through that, Dan says, well, you know, Dan, if you, if you want to turn some knobs, you come up with some other solutions. So he did. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, I've been wanting to make these knobs for many years. I just never got around to it. So when I was enlisted to help with this project, I didn't protest too much. Um, so what I'm going to show you, you know, Larry showed you uh, how easy inserting a uh, brass insert or a threaded insert. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it with T-nuts. And I'm also going to show you how to do it with a scroll saw. <laughs> uh, so my knob started, I, I had this knob for some time, and I, I just liked the feel of it. So I decided to pattern my knobs off of that knob. It's about two and an eighth inches in diameter, and the height is about one and a quarter inches. The standoff in this case is about seven eighths. I made my standoff a little bit bigger. I like the portions of a bigger standoff. Plus, I wanted more wood around here uh, to for the, for the insert or whatever going inside there. Just more more material around there to keep them splitting. So my knobs are patterned off of that knob. I'll show you some of the ones I made here. Uh, Here's some of the early, earlier ones I did where I bored the hole. This is a threaded insert where I bored the hole all the way through for the threaded insert. And I decided I didn't like that. So then what I did is instead of boring that, that, that size hole all the way through, I only bored it down as deep as what the insert would go and then made a clearance hole for the size of the bolt that was going to come out. And those were turned on the lay. And then here's the same. Uh, This, this one was turned on or turned on the scroll saw, sort of cut on the scroll saw. And the way you can tell the difference is this one's got a flat top and these have got contoured tops. The, the top surface is contoured and this is flat. It's kind of hard to make a contoured surface on the uh, scroll saw. <coughs> uh, so the size of my knobs is for, for the 5 16 by 18 and 3 8 by 16 knobs are 1 and an 8 inches in diameter and the uh, quarter of a 20 knobs are one and a half inches in diameter, and I still maintain had maintained the same height of the knob. Now I've got one of the, that standoff with the proportionalize that standoff. I thought it might be a little bit too long, so I shortened it up a little bit, and I thought, well, I think that was probably too short. So I haven't come to a happy medium on how long my how tall my my quarter of a twenty knob should be. Um, so I'm going to uh, with the T nut. When you install a T nut, does everybody know what a T nut is? Anybody does, does anybody not know what a T nut is? 
when you install a T-nut, you could use it, make it round, of course. You could use it like that and screw it on, and as long, as long as you're always putting pressure from this side, it'd work fine. But if, if the hole in here is a little bit larger than the T-nut body, or if you put any kind of pressure from this side, that T-nut will come loose and pop out. So what the solution I've come up with is I make a, make a sandwich, and I, I fix it so that that T-nut is, is locked inside the block. So uh, this is my body block that I'm calling it. And I'm, I'm using, half, I'm using uh, three layers. I'm using a half inch layer for the body. And then the cover that goes over the top to hold the T-nut in is a quarter inch thickness. And then my standoff is a half inch thickness that gives me the, the one and a quarter inch overall height. Uh, and again, the material, the, this, this, this thickness of this material, the Baltic birch uh, material, You get this Baltic birch material in half and quarter inch, and they also go three quarter. But for the water, for this purpose, I didn't use it. You can get these at uh, Woodcraft, and I think they're uh, uh, a foot square, 12 inch square panels for. Here's one that says 275 for a quarter inch. They had a stack of them down there several months ago where they were a buck a piece. So I got a got a stack of them at that time. So there's that's the Baltic birch, and then Home Depot has MDF. And they, they have two foot by two foot panels, or two foot by four foot, or whatever. Um, but you get the two foot by two foot panels, you know, relatively inexpensively. So they have also come in quarter and, and half inch thicknesses, which makes it convenient for the, uh, the, the thickness of the knob I want to use here. And if, say, you wanted to use a hardwood or solid wood, and you didn't have a, you uh, didn't want to go to the expense of buying material that was already surfaced, you could use a surface plane to plane it down. But if you don't have a surface plane, you could, here's a, here's a scrap piece of wood. I never throw anything away. This, this came from some sort of a rack. And it was finished, so I didn't want to, I wanted to get rid of the finish on it. So what I did is I took the Forstner bit, and I just went down deep enough to get rid of the finish to give me a clean surface. And then I measured that thickness, and then I bored down to make this piece Whatever I needed to put those two together would give me the one and a quarter inch thickness. So using a forstner bit and a drill press, you can surface mill the wood <coughs> to whatever thickness you want. And then once you get it thickness, then you could just simply cut around there and give you the uh, a round blank to work with. Another solution that we had opportunity we had the uh, a week or so ago, Dick brought in some uh, his brother-in-law was it? Your son-in-law? No, my son-in-law. Work, worked at a, uh, a trophy shop. Trophy shop. Rejects. And so he had this a box of rejects up there. Well, that's three quarter and that's half. Or that's a little bit less than half. So it comes anyway, it comes up. I glued them together like this to give me the thickness that I wanted. So you can uh, you can use solid wood, but you can get the uh, the wood the, the, the one you call the birch or the MDF, you can it's readily available in those thicknesses. And then, so here's an example of a drawbar that comes in through the headstock of the blade like, to hold on whatever I got in here. Like a, if I'm using a, something in there that's got threads in it, like, like the, the model stock or bandrel. I come in for, with, the, with the drawbar. And what I've done on here then is I've got, there's a, there's this, this, as you can see here, this has got three layers. There's three layers of wood there. And I can't remember whether the T-nut's there or t there, but there's a T-nut inside there. And then this hole here was drilled. This is a quarter... 5 16 shaft, so I drilled a quarter inch hole here, so the threads make that makes it tight on there when I screw it on. But I got the T nut in there to help keep the wood from stripping out, strip the threads stripping out of just wood, and then I got the wood wood drill hole drilled small to put pressure on the shaft so it, it doesn't doesn't turn on the uh, on the shaft. So yeah, you, so you can make a a, a a knob with a stud on it using that. Uh, that